Alright, we're back here with this coyote. We're going to uh, put the tanning cream on it. Let him hang here for three or four hours. Get most of the moisture off of him. Got the tail split all the way down. Looks pretty good. We're going to go ahead and start putting the tanning cream on. What I did is I warmed this up a little bit. Anyway, put a little oil on there, shake it up first, and just rub it in. Make sure you get around the ears. Got to get the head here. Pour a little bit on there. We'll clean this up, the head, get that bloody stuff off of there when we break it and that, and get it ready for the rug. Don't forget the bottom, the bottom lip here. I'll put it on kind of liberally. It's, doesn't take a lot, it spreads out quite a bit. You just don't want any dry spots, I guess you'd say. I'm just kind of spreading it out as I go here. Paw spread out. I'll put a little bit on here. Just keep put it on your legs here. Get some in your paws. You can always pour a little bit in there too. Good. Make sure you get that. Just keep coming down the coming down the skin. We're down here to the bottom here already. Doesn't take long to do this. A nice film of oil on there. Same thing with the feet here, make sure you get a little oil on down in there. Just the easy part of this. Uh, breaking is the hard part of any tanning process, I think. It's got to be soft enough to, to use. We're going to make a rug out of this, remember. Probably felt back. And this was a blonde coyote I got a, a few days, oh, I don't know, a week ago maybe. I forget when, but he was real blonde, so thought it would make a cool mount of some kind. to either do a full mount or a rug mount, and we decided on a rug mount it's cheaper. Okay, we got the tail. Got the legs here. Got the this. Now what I'm gonna do? Got everything oiled with the tanning cream. I'm gonna go ahead and cover it up with another piece of plastic here. Then tomorrow we'll wash it, soap and water, get it all cleaned up, and. Uh, Probably start breaking it tomorrow too after it starts drying out. What you want to do is you can either use uh, your hands or a brush. Let me get over here on this side. You want to give it a good coating. 
a nice liberal coat. Now wear hand protection here. Now we're going to be going up and down this, so I'll do the area where you can see with the camera. You see how I'm doing that? Just make sure you get a nice even coat on it and uh, just pour it on. I say a lot of people want to do their own hives. This is one of the ways you, you can do them. Nope, they don't want to live. Just apply a liberal amount. Now with this, some, some uh, liquid cans like this, they want you to cover it up like with a paper or something at night. So we're just going to go ahead and make sure we still have plenty. Pour some on there and just get it and do the edges. Get the legs done. Just give a nice generous coat. Don't you can get enough to do, you can buy it by the court, and a lot of times the court will do probably four deer capes, which will equalize into probably about two hides. And I just, I'm really giving it a liberal amount, so you can see that. We'll just move this on up here a little bit. And this, and when this is tanned, tomorrow morning, I'll rinse this out. I'll put some soap in there and we'll get the, we'll clean the hide up real nice. But we'll go ahead and uh, let it start air dry. And I'll hang it from a hook on, from the rafters here. And once it gets to the point where it starts getting a little bit, not very stiff, but just a little bit dry, we'll start the met the breaking part of this. And that's actually going to be the hardest part because it just takes a lot of work breaking a hide, getting it soft. Uh, the more you break it, the softer it's going to get. Uh, that's all there is to it. Uh, you can, if you don't break it, you're going to have a hard hide. It'll turn out it'll be as hard as a rock. That's why you have to break it somehow. That's what they call it when they soften it, breaking the hide. So, anyway, we'll go up to this end here. We'll go ahead and get some on this, the tail end. We'll pour some out here. You see that? I already got this here done, so we'll go up here and we'll do this leg. And then when you get done here, you can trim, before you start breaking and that, if you want to make these rough edges off, if you want, make a nice oval, do whatever you want. Yeah, I like to keep them kind of like they are. So anyway, we got this baby here really nice and coated, nice generous coat on it. And we'll let that put my, put this back in the, my brush back in and let it soak get that stuff off of it. We'll, we'll just leave that sit here tonight. Uh, set this in the sink. And that's all there is. Tomorrow morning I'll wash it, get the tanning cream off of it, whatever's left, whatever's been soaked in. Put it in the sink, wash it up good, put a little soap in there, I'll wash it out. We'll hang it and just let it, probably spread it out a little bit so the air can circulate around it. And then uh, as it starts drying, we'll go ahead and we'll start breaking it. I'll get my breaking board here and I'll show you how we do it. And then uh, the rest will be up to you trying to get her soft. By the way, this is a pretty simple method. Start rinsing it out with uh, coolish not lukewarm water, but just some cool water. Just a little bit at a time here. Let me get some of this stuff out of the way here. And uh, just go ahead and just rinse it off.
when you start breaking this hide, it'll start taking on a whiter appearance. Because it, it gets dirty as it soaks in the uh, solutions. Because your hide is kind of dirty to start with, a lot of dirt on them. But as you can see, as I'm rinsing this out, most of that's coming off. Get all the tanning solution off. And you know what? I think I am going to go ahead and wash this hide out. I gotta make a plug here for my sink. I lost my rubber plug. So, we're gonna go ahead and just get the water, not even tap it. Just, uh, just get some water in there. Get a little, I fill my sink about halfway up. I can rinse and agitate this pretty good. You can see the water is kind of dirty because there's blood on the hide, things like that. It's, we're going to go ahead and get it cleaned up here. That's one of the things with uh, if you're doing this at home as a beginner, you don't you might not have a big sink like this, but you could use a bathtub too. Use a bathtub or a big, like a plastic garbage can. Uh, just get your, just get a nice soapy mix in there. And I'm not gonna leave it in here too long. I don't want to do it. I just want to wash it. The reason I wash it, I looked at the belly skin. Put a little blood on it here. I want to make sure on on the hair. I want to make sure that I get that fairly clean. Sometimes that blood is hard to get out of there. We'll let that soak a little bit. What we're going to do, we're going to let that soak. Oh, probably five, ten minutes. We're going to rinse it out with cool water, get the soap out of it. Then we're going to hang it and let it drip dry. And as it's drying, we'll just keep an eye on it. It gets to the point where I think we'll break it. I'll get back on video and show you that. It's got some burrs in there, and you just take a pull your hair apart like this, taco burrs, and they'll come out pretty easy. You'll have a lot of those. This guy here must have been in the burrs chasing rabbits or something, because he got a lot of them. I try to get the ones that are going to come out easy first, or just get them and then you can comb this. Some of these taco burrs, they dissolve in, when you're doing the pickle. Now, if I was to leave it, leave it in the pickle for two or three days, those cockle birds would be real soft and you could brush them out. But, like I say, I don't want to take a chance of losing the hide. So I don't pickle these very long. About a day is all for these thinner skin ones. Like a fox, maybe a half a day. Because I've lost a couple fox in the pickle and I don't know why. Well, you don't know how they take care of them. They bring them in frozen most of the time. You don't know how long it sat around or whatever. Okay, I'm just pulling this hair apart. And that way I can pull that taco burr out of there. They actually come out pretty easy that way. This guy here, he got a ton of them. <laughs> he must have been after rabbits or birds or something in their pheasants. I think it's going to turn out pretty nice. I haven't seen any glaring problems with this. The, the hair is tight. I don't think I'm going to lose any of the slippage. You go down the go down the way here, and you can find these burrs pretty easy. Just pull them apart, pull them out. My dang man, he is just loaded. I hate to get to the tail because I know the tail is going to be just brutal.
I had another coyote this morning, nice coyote. A little bit darker than this one, but not too bad. I'm just looking at this and cockle birds, whatever else he's got in here. Like I say, just uh, pull the hair apart. Don't try to pull it out in one clump. Just pull the hair apart and that'll expose most of them. should do this before you flesh it. You can really tear a big hole in them if you're not careful. We're pretty careful. We're lucky, I guess, after seeing all these cockle burrs. I guess I must have just forgot about them or didn't want to deal with them. Sometimes you get that way, but this is my own, so on the customers I wouldn't be that way, but on my own sometimes. I'll go try to do a shortcut. That way I can learn how to do it on somebody else's shortcut or whatever. I have to hang on just a second. I'll try to find this big comb I got. Man, it's a brute. I'll show you. Really got some teeth in it. I don't know where I picked this up at, but I can get most of this. I got most of those out of there, so I can go ahead and get most of them. I got a tough one right here. Just pull it apart. You don't want to get too aggressive with it. Well, you can see I got most of them up above here. I got a thing that looks a little thin on the top right here. Maybe it's just because it's darker hair. Anyway. We're going down the way there. Get got most of those birds out all the way. Oh, there's one. I'll work on it again later, but anyway. You get the idea anyway. And that way that hair will <laughs> anyway, that's how you do that. Get most of those birds out of there. You don't want a rug that's got cockle burrs in it. Look at all this stuff that comes out of their burrs. Let me just get rid of that stuff. No hair coming out, which is good. And sometimes if you do this and you pull clumps of hair out, then you go, hide isn't too good. If you get a nice fresh hide, if it's been taken care of, it makes a big difference in taxidermy. You get a hide that's iffy, a gut shot one that's been sitting around for a couple days, I can almost guarantee you you'll have belly slip on it. It just, for one reason, predators are real susceptible to that. I'll tell you what, I think that's going to be a nice looking coyote when he gets stuck. Anyway, we got that. We'll shake him a little bit. And Anyway, we'll get back to him later. The first thing I want to show you is what I'm using here. What I did is I went ahead and uh, got a 4x4. Four four. This is what I use for my breaking tool when I'm doing animal hides for tanning. What I did is I took a 4x4, four four, I run a couple saw whisks down through here, and I used a piece of old car or truck leaf spring, you can see here. And I drove it down in there. And then for my base, I'll show you, I've got it stuck down in a cement block. And I wedged it in there with wood. And it makes it a real solid base. Uh, the only thing i got to do is i got to dress this up a little bit. Because when I, pound, when I went to pound that in with a hammer... I went ahead and nicked that blade up a little so you don't want it sharp you want kind of a rounded dull edge on it and if you want you can even straighten this out heat this and take that bend out of it but I found that bend doesn't really bother me I cut this at an angle so when you work that hide down, you don't bark your knuckles on that. It lay out flat last night, and you can see it's it's drying out. Now you can see when I pull this how that gets white. That's stretching those fibers apart. 
and that's what you want to do. You want to get those fibers spread apart. And the more you stretch it, the more you can do that. It, the, the more softer it'll be. See how that kind of flexes? Now look at that spot right there. We're going to run that over this tool of mine here. Or I mean, breaking. And you'll see that that'll come out white. If I got the right spot here. Yeah, right, right through here. Here's another spot here. We'll just go ahead and work this over here. And just go ahead and what that's doing is that's spreading those fibers apart. You see how kind of white that is there? We'll go down the way here, down the back here. Here's some more of the area I didn't touch yet. But you can see when I pull on that, it gets white. Like this right here and here. Just go ahead and pull on that, stretch it. You see that? Just see how that just gets white? And you gotta go over every inch of this hide on your on your on your breaking tool here otherwise you'll end up with hard spots so I kind of work from the let's, let's work from the, the neck on down we won't worry about too much about the head right now except for the nose here I'm going to get that just a little bit softer but that's still pliable from yesterday but anyway we're going to go this way across this, kind of break those fibers up, spread them apart. We'll do the main part of it and then we'll come back and do the edges. Just keep working at it. If you're going to tan and make clothes, you want to get as soft as you can. Watch any holes. If you get any holes, make sure you don't rip those a bigger. Got the leg here. Another, you can go crossways with this tool here like this too, especially on these narrow pieces of skin like this. See that? And then I, I go the other way with it. Like I say, tanning is hard work to dry tan. The wet tan, like we do our skins for mounting, is not too bad. Keep going like that, all the way around. Make sure you get your legs, you don't want them to get too hard. This is the other rear leg that we're going to break like this. Still got some spots here we can break. I kind of tore that there a little bit too. What I'll do is I'll sew that up. 
and get done tanning it. Well, we'll get done breaking it, but I'll stay away from that area for now. I'm looking for other areas that need to be broke. You gotta be kind of gentle with them. This is the front leg here. So we'll just go crossways on this down as far as I can reach. And then we'll do this to soften her a little bit. It's got a hole in it here from skinning or something. I, I gotta be kind of careful with that one. I'm just gonna go around it real gentle. Got that. Now what I'll do is I'll lay this out a little for another day. We're just gonna lay it out to uh, dry some more. <clears throat> I'll just put it right over this here. We'll let that dry out some more. And if your tail's getting stiff, you'll want to go across there with that too. But uh, tomorrow we'll rub some oil on this. And then we'll let that sit, and then we'll break it again. Take the leg, and I'll go over the top of this like, like this here. And what that does, is it just breaks that a little bit. Be kind of gentle with it. You don't want to go, some coyote skin is real thin. See, I go one way, then I'll go back against the grain the other way. And that kind of pulls those fibers apart. If you don't do this, your hide is going to get as stiff as a board. And you won't, you'll have to re-wet it or do something with it. Re-wet it to get it to get back to a state you can work with it. Now see how that kind of... Then you can peel off this other stuff after a while. We'll have to come back and do this again. Tanning is real labor intensive. Uh, it's good, you know, to know how to do it for you do it yourselfers and that, but you can send these away to be tanned for probably, oh, I'd say 50 bucks you could have this tanned and it would save you hours of work. I mean, just hours. You just go ahead and keep pulling. I'm going to turn the head inside out here and see. If... Now remember we're going to make a rug out of this and i got a shell coming for the head. So we're going to break this a little bit. The head dries first because you got it hanging up and usually the snout is exposed to air. I'll just go over the top. Just be careful with it. And then I'll just go back the other way. We'll rehydrate the head before we get ready to mount it. That way we can glue it and all that. It's Just go over that. A lot of people use like a, a pipe or a cable strung between two trees or between two beams and just run your hide back and forth over the top.
this is still damp. You got the bottom jaw. Just do a little bit at a time. Find your dry dry spots here. Well, the legs will dry out quick. And just kind of pull everything. And you can feel it stretch apart. Well, what that's doing is that's stretching those fibers in there. Now if you want to lay this out flat on a table, it'll dry out enough to do it uh, in a night. In fact, it might be too fast. You can see how it turns white when you pull it. That means you're stretching those fibers out. Like that. And that's what you need. You need to stretch those out. We'll go around here and see if we got some more here that you can see. We'll try this side here now. There's some here. You pull that like so. There's some right here we'll be able to pull. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this over the beam, this leg over the beam. Might be the leg I already did, I don't know. Lose track of it sometimes. That leg there is. One thing sending it away, you come back, it comes back beautiful. Depending on what tannery you're using. But it comes back really nice, your hide. Real soft. I can never get them as soft as what a tannery can get them. I get them soft enough so I can make rug out of them or whatever. But if you want a really, really soft, butter soft tan, then go with the tannery. But some people want to do it themselves. And I understand that. It just kind of breaks everything apart. Just be kind of gentle. Now tomorrow, if this dries out a little more, we'll go ahead and uh, Put a little oil on this, a little saddle soap, and uh, get this to uh, soak up a little oil. It's got to be a little drier to soak up that oil, and that'll help. But other than that, we'll get back at this tomorrow after it dries out a little more.